Welcome to Chevrolet, home of America's sports car. I'm talking about the one and only Corvette. And by now you guys have seen the pictures, but nothing comes close to seeing the seventh generation of an automotive icon in the flesh. We're proud to bring to you the all new 2014 Corvette Stingray. Since 1953, the Corvette has been setting and raising the bar for attainable performance. And this seventh generation only sees us continuing that legacy. This represents the return of the Stingray name, and only a Corvette with the perfect balance of performance, technology, and design earns the right to wear that prestigious badge. Since 1963, when the original Stingray came out, it was absolutely leapfrogging the competition's current design. And this 2014 Stingray continues on in that tradition with a design that is anything but what the current industry is going for with the look that's retro and what was. This design is futuristic, dramatic, radical even. It is the antithesis of complacency, the enemy of the same. An enemy of the same is our mantra. You'll see it on some of our marketing materials, and it is what we kept in mind when redesigning every single element of the 2014 Stingray. There are literally only two carryover parts on this entire vehicle from the C6. A latch and a filter, and that is it. Everything else is all new. And with the winningest team in ALMS history, we knew just who to turn to when it came for advice regarding weight savings, aerodynamics, and performance-based design. You're going to notice a generous use of lightweight materials. We've got an all-carbon fiber hood. We've got a carbon fiber removable rooftop, carbon nano underbody components, an all-aluminum frame, a world-class power to weight ratio and 50-50 weight distribution. And we like to stress to you guys that the Stingray is the standard Corvette for 2014. So everything that you hear me discuss is available on our standard Corvette. Now when I talked about that all new frame, I like to mention that this is the North American debut of the convertible version of the Stingray. And this new frame is 99 pounds lighter than our previous frame, but it's also 57% stiffer. And because open air driving is a huge part of Corvette's legacy, considering that the 1953 Corvette was a true roadster, when we went into redesigning Corvette and developing this seventh generation, we absolutely knew that a convertible was on the books. So rather than create a lovely coupe and then figure out a way to chop the top and make it structurally sound, we knew from the get-go we were producing a convertible and so we built that aluminum frame with a convertible in mind. And what that means is there are literally no structural modifications to accommodate the convertible top. The only additions that you'll find are the exterior fenders and whatnot that accommodate the actual mechanics for the convertible top, meaning that you don't have a heavier car. We have identical power to weight ratios when you go from coupe to convertible and identical 50-50 weight distribution. So you don't sacrifice when you get the convertible like you often do in other cases. Now on the exterior, you're going to notice the all-new body lines. Out back, one of the most dramatic changes is our new dual-element tail lamp that you'll see back here. These are actually lit from LEDs below, and then they are cast into a reflector to give you an even glow all across the light housing assembly. Up front, you're going to see our new headlamps. Those are xenon with accents of LEDs. And then we've got something kind of special for you under the hood. We've got our all-new fifth-generation small block. It's the third generation of our LT1. It's a 6.2 liter engine. And I know that displacement might sound familiar to some of you guys, but this is an all new architecture. The engine was developed specifically for use in the Corvette, and we've put a ton of time into every single element of it. Aluminum block, aluminum head, the majority of the man hours that went into developing this engine went into the topography of the actual piston head and the angle of the injectors and the spark plugs. Every single thing was thought through so very thoroughly.
we're expecting this LT1 to produce 450 horsepower and 450 pound-feet of torque. The reason we say it's expecting is because we have not finalized SAE numbers yet. We know it's going to be 450, 450, but certainly before the launch in the fourth quarter of this year, there's a possibility we could cram a few more ponies under the hood, if you know what I'm saying. So this LT1 also features advanced technologies, such as variable valve timing, a first for an internal cam engine, active fuel management, another first because that's also available on our manual transmission, which does not exist in the industry currently, and direct injection. With those three combined technologies, we expect the Stingray to achieve 26 miles per gallon on the highway. That is going to make it the most fuel-efficient Corvette, the most powerful standard Corvette, and the most fuel-efficient vehicle with 450 horsepower on the market. So you don't have to sacrifice performance for fuel economy. We also like to point out that this engine is an absolute powerhouse. Under 4,000 RPM, the torque output for this rivals that of our legendary LS7 and the C6's Z06, that 7 liter aluminum block up there. So there is no want for power in this engine. And it is mated to your choice of either a six-speed automatic transmission with paddle shifters right on the steering wheel or a seven-speed Tremec manual transmission with active rev matching. For those of you who don't know what active rev matching is, it's the ability for the vehicle to anticipate your gear selection and actually blip the throttle between gears so there's no more heel towing and you get an absolutely seamless transition through all seven of those forward gears. For those of you who aren't interested in that, we know we've got some pros out there, they want to handle all the work, you can disengage that directly from the steering wheel. Inside of the Stingray, the interior redesign is arguably more dramatic than the exterior. We've heard you guys, we know that the interior was a sticking point for some folks out there, and we have absolutely delivered an interior that rivals the promise made by the exterior. You're going to find grade A elements throughout. You will not find carbon fiber look. You will not find chrome cladding. Anything you've seen here is absolutely genuine. This, if it looks like carbon fiber, it's carbon fiber, and the same thing applies to the aluminum, the chrome, and the suede. We've introduced two new seats. We know seat comfort was something that was very important to you guys. And this is our GT seat. It is the best of both worlds. It's certainly sporty, but it gives you everyday comfort. We also offer our available competition seat, which you're going to find in the seat buck back there. That's going to be more for the track. It's going to give you those big, beefy side bolsters and accommodations for a five-point harness in the back of it. You'll notice we have a smaller steering wheel knife now for a more dynamic driving experience and better response when it comes to steering maneuvers. And then we've got dual eight-inch configurable screens, one in your center stack and one in your instrument cluster. The one in the center stack is going to be where you find your MyLink infotainment system. It'll give you instant access to contact, media, music, and more. And the one in your instrument cluster is going to give you all your vehicle-related information, and, and you can toggle through various items there. We also offer our legendary heads-up display, which will give you the ability to look at various vehicle attributes right in the reflection on your windshield. Now, how many of you guys spent any time at Monticello, at Co, or Lime Rock? Because if you do, you're going to want to pay attention to this knob right here on our center console. That's our drive mode selector. We offer five different drive modes, sport, eco, weather, touring, and track, and those drive modes are going to affect 12 different vehicle attributes. We're talking everything from your traction control, to your stability track, to your intake, to your, thr or your throttle, your intake, to your shift points, to your steering, to the stiffness of your suspension with the MRC. Those are all going to be changed based on what mode you put the vehicle in to have the perfect setting for whatever performance situation you find yourself in. So let's say you're driving to Monticello. Well, you're normally going to keep it in tour mode, but why not switch it over to eco to maximize fuel economy on the way there? That's going to keep you in four-cylinder mode as often as possible. When you jam on the accelerator, you're still going to get all eight cylinders, but it's going to wait till the last minute to start kicking those in for you to maximize fuel economy. 
But when you get on track, flip that baby over to track mode for the stiffest ascension setting, all eight cylinders, and everything you need to absolutely dominate because that's what Corvette is all about, the best of both worlds. Now, we offer our Z51 package. In addition, that's available on all three trim levels of the Stingray, and that's going to give you the functional exterior vents and extractors that you see here. Again, everything that you see is absolutely functional. Up front, this vent here, it's not a traditional ram air. It's actually an outlet for the air that sucks in through the air dam in the front. And the idea is that it comes in here, and it certainly does some pulling in your engine compartment, but it actually reduces front end lift from cornering and extraction. Accelerating. Out back on the rear quarter panel, those two vents, one cools your rear mounted transaxle and the other one cools your rear differential and those exit out near the tail light. Z51 is also going to give you dry sump oiling. It's going to give you the aero package that you see on the vehicle. And it's going to give you the 19 and 20 inch staggered wheels as opposed to the 18 and 19 inch configuration on Stingray without the Z51 package. The other thing that Z51 allows for you to get is magnetic ride control. MRC is our legendary technology that utilizes magnetorheological fluid within the shop then that we can pass an electronic current through them to modify the stiffness of your suspension in milliseconds continuously. So you are always in the optimum suspension setting for whatever conditions your vehicle is on. And MRC is something that when the Corvette or its sister car, the ZL1, are mated against their closest competitors, automotive magazines typically talk about how MRC is really what helps these, these vehicles stomp the competition. The reason being that the vehicle is so responsive and it handles so well because of the MRC that you as a driver are more comfortable pushing the vehicle harder. Whereas if you feel like you're not getting the response in a vehicle that you're looking for, you're going to be a little bit more skittish. So it makes you a better driver and it's really all about merging man and machine. So MRC is going to allow you to do that. Now, if you have the ability to go from 0 to 60 in under 4 seconds, you're going to want to stop fast, and Brembo brakes with four piston calipers all the way around are going to have you covered. Now, I know you guys still have some lingering questions, and the big one is price. When it comes to price, we haven't released pricing on the C7 yet. The only thing we've gone so far as to say is that if you can afford a present C6, we would expect that you would be able to afford a C7. This is the standard Corvette again, I want to point out. So keep that in mind. It might be a bit more because of all of the new technology, but not so much more that it alienates our present buyer. When it comes to release date, the coupe is going to go into production at the end of the third quarter, and it'll be out in the fourth quarter of this year. The convertible is scheduled to go into production by the fourth quarter and be out shortly thereafter. So guys, thanks so much for talking to me. My name is Heather. If you have any additional questions, make sure you take some time to view what we brought out for you today because when we were coming to New York City, we knew that nothing less than the best would impress you guys.